，大部分接触的富有阶级，可能是他已经。Most of the people I know who are well off already own several properties that become sources of income. However, most working age individuals struggle with meager wages to afford a house and cover living expenses. It feels like we're living in two worlds in Taiwan. Taiwan is facing a transformation into an M-shaped society, a change driven by high inflation, escalating living costs, and unchanging wages. This shift has deepened economic disparities, catapulting the wealth gap to its highest in a decade. Recent data from the Directorate General of Budget, Accounting and Statistics (DGBAS) paints a clear picture. In 2022, the top 20% of families in Taiwan had an average income nearing 2.3 million NT dollars. On the other hand, the bottom 20% only averaged 365,000 NT dollars. What does this mean in real terms? A staggering income difference of almost 1.9 million NT dollars, creating an income gap almost 6.2 times wide. The industrial structure in Taiwan has shifted from being labor-intensive to capital and knowledge-intensive. As a result, the GDP profits mostly go to capitalists and knowledge workers, leaving the general labor class with less. Also, the financial market has been active in recent years, providing opportunities for wealthy investors to increase their wealth through financial operations. But there's more to the story. A closer look at Taiwan's GDP from 2012 to 2021 shows a concerning trend. Employee compensation as a percentage of the GDP has seen a slide from 45.77 percent down to 43 percent. This 2.74 percent drop is not just significant; it's historically low. In simpler terms, employees are getting a shrinking slice of the economic pie. Ah, 如果说发生了像when structural changes occur in the economy, like a pandemic or financial crisis, the wealth gap tends to widen. This is because minority groups are more likely to suffer than the socially privileged, especially in Asian countries. In general, Asian countries lack strong labor unions to support and bargain with employers. This gives employers an advantage in salary negotiations. Recognizing this, DGBAS Minister Zhu Zeming spoke out in October. He acknowledged the government's role in income inequality and proposed a remedy: better income distribution through diverse fiscal and welfare strategies. Yet a warning looms: if wage growth lags behind inflation and our tax structures remain unchanged, we risk a future where the wealthy thrive and the impoverished struggle even more. Chen Wenyue, Yu Xinghan, Isabel Wan, TVBS, World Taiwan.